The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret society, to secret oath, and to secret proceedings. Waking humanity, one soul at a time. This is The World You Don't Know Radio Show with your host, Nick O'Connell. Now, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome along to this week's edition of The World You Don't Know with myself, Mick O'Connell. And I do have a guest coming on. I've got a, a chap called Thomas Williams coming on. Now, Thomas is a native of Liverpool, but he lives in the uh, US over in Florida. Um, lucky for him. And um, he's a bit like myself, I suppose. Um, just to give you a, a brief description, um, Thomas has gone through life trying to find answers of why he felt different. I mean, we've all, anyone who seeks the truth in, in the truth movement, have all had that as a, a child even growing up, that, you know, you felt something wasn't right. And Thomas is one of those people. Eventually, like most of us, he found the internet and launched into a campaign then of researching, uh, starting in the mid, late, the mid to the late 90s. And he went on then to form his own radio show called the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. So um, I'm going to go straight to Thomas because there's an awful lot of talk about and least of all I suppose or first of all should I say um, what's going on in Palestine today um, with um, the opening of the American Embassy in Jerusalem um, a smack in the face to the Palestinians if ever there was one and a massive escalation of um, the conflict out there anyway I'm going to go straight to Thomas good evening Thomas Hi, and uh, thanks for inviting me on. You're more than welcome. Listen, thanks very much for coming on to the show. Now, I don't know if you heard um, my opening few lines there about what's going on out in the Middle East. Um, some serious doings out there today, Thomas. Uh, uh, I haven't had a chance. I've only just got in from work. I haven't had a chance to catch up with it. But uh, right. there's there's a lot of other issues going on in the whole of the Middle East uh, and what it's appearing as in the news or the mainstream news, uh, is not what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, and uh, part of the problem is there's a, a load of names, and is and ISIL and uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, all these names, Sunnis, and, and I could go on forever with them, they're, they're all part of the uh, rogue elements uh, out of operating out of agencies, both in the UK, America, uh, also Russia, and also Israel, as they all work together, um, and it, it's all about their control again. Now, there's a possibility that moving the embassy has uh, other meanings that has never been covered in the media. Um, it also blocks off certain others taking over that region which is part of what they want to do and it protects the uh, not only the, ultimately the israeli people but also the palestinian people it's, so what do you think uh, the ultimate agenda is out there like you, you mentioned that it blocks off other people who would you be thinking about like the russians chinese um originally uh, the plan for the middle east uh, I read the document back in the 90s, which is no longer on the internet. And there was a lot of documents out in the, uh, the early part of the internet that if you were lucky to read and remember, you, you see a better picture now. Once it started getting into the 2000s, and particularly around 2011, 2012, it all went sideways for me. And uh, it was directed news. Uh, designed to take you away from the truth rather than give you the truth. And uh, so this particular document was a Vatican document, which of course was, at the time, was run by the Nazi element. Um, of course, Mr. Ratzinger was a former SS officer. So everyone thinks the Vatican is Christian and Jesuit, mm. but it was taken over by the, the Nazi element. Uh, for those who are not aware, the Illuminati no longer exists. They broke up into, fa into five factions. One of it's the Nazis, one of it's the Zionists, which is connected to the country of uh, Israel, but not necessarily to do with Israeli people. Mm. Um, then you've got the Asian societies, the Ch Chinese elders, uh, all wrapped into one. Uh, they're the people who are trying to pull off the RV. That will never take place and the secret societies, which is the P2 Lodge, uh, the uh, Scottish Rite Freemasonry, not all Freemasonry and not all Templars either. So it's, uh, and the other one is the Jesuits. Well, of course, uh, Pope Francis came in 
a couple of years ago because that was a coup inside um, the Vatican and the Jesuit then took over the Nazi element that were running it prior. Now the the whole region uh, uh, has history that far predates um, what is considered the norm. Most people say it's six to eight thousand years. No, there, there was beings and people there many, many thousands of years ago, and that's why that whole region is a cesspit of violence because they're using the humans to fight their race for their benefit. And the overall plan was the caliphate uh, that was going to be done by the Nazi element and was taken up by the Zionists and the Jesuit elements because they want control of that region because it's mineral rich and all kinds of other reasons. And the plan was to move all the people out, including the Israelis. And this is why they've tried the World War Three, so they'll decimate a load. And the ones that are left, there's no infrastructure left. They'll move into Europe, which fills their other agenda of crashing Europe, crashing Americans' economy, and then switching everything over to the east, which is what everyone saw over the last 20 years. All the companies going east because that's where the financial, mm. um, the financial. Uh, the new Federal Reserve that was uh, situated in America was going to Beijing. Um, and that's why they are gonna crash the Western economies, turn us into third world countries. Meanwhile, um, the wars in, uh, in the people in Iraq, the people in certainly Northern uh, Iran, uh, Syria, Lebanon, um, what's the other one? Jordan, Palestine and Israel and southern Turkey will be pushed further north. And that wall that they built was going to go right across to southern Turkey and right round. And they were going to close it all off. And that's when World War Three would happen and flatten the Dome of the Rock. And then they build their third temple. And it goes back to ancient history. Um, there was a lot of... Uh, uh, history way before the pyramids and way way before uh, a lot of uh, the what we perceive as history. Mm. Uh, well, I think most of our history probably that only goes back. Has been going on at least fifty thousand years, and uh, they've always been fighting there. And uh, some ele elements of it in the Bible, the uh, Cain and Abel is Enki and Enlil, really. Mm. By by name, uh, for those of you familiar with that, and the family fighting, uh, in fighting for control of certain regions of the planet that they think they own. The reality is they don't anymore. And do you think these like so-called um, aliens, if you want to call them that? I, I mean, you mentioned um, Enel and Enki. There, you're talking about the Anunnaki. Yeah. Do you think they actually did exist? I mean, you see all these programs on the History Channel and, you know, Ancient Aliens, and, and I've watched most of them, and a lot of it to me is just tripe, to be honest with you. You know, they're, it's, they're guessing yeah. about a lot of stuff. But, I mean, the Anunnaki come up again and again and again and again in most of those documentaries. I mean, it, yeah, it, it can't well, be just myths and legends. There must be something in it. Yeah. The, to me, uh, I've managed to have access to more knowledge than most because of the people I've dealt with mm. and because of my own knowledge. Um, they were here, um, certain ones were here before us. Certain one came here after us. And um, um, there was uh, um, a, a large war going on here from 25,000 years ago to 16,000 years ago. And we did, uh, the humans uh, then at that time what we're living uh, in with nature and in harmony with nature and uh, pretty much full consciousness which is what we're low in currently and um, certain groups came in here and this is linked to the atlantans who were not all good either and um, who were then battling with the lemurians um, and uh, another race came in and used advanced weaponry and it turned this planet into um, the deserts because we never had deserts. Uh, deserts are evidence of past um, 
real advanced weaponry. Now, I have a friend of mine, he, he does a radio show here called... Um, it's People's Internet Radio. I don't know if you're aware of it, um, Vincent Bourne. But he's made a couple of great videos. He, he made one video in particular in relation to what you just mentioned there, this ancient war and stuff like that. But it was all based out in the Middle East, um, most of it anyway, and in parts from America. But it was... Th- th- basically, the whole premise of the video was that um, something had struck the planet in that region many many thousands of years ago something electrical and had uh, like you know turned it into deserts but he was showing you p- parts of the desert on google earth where there was these big rings massive rings like 40 kilometers in diameter but what they looked yeah. like was they looked like a bone spark plug if you ever see a spark plug from the top down it was boned it looked yeah. like that you know from like huge voltage going through it yeah well it, it's the Middle East was to do with one particular family, which is uh, the Enki Enlil story and the Marduk and the Anu and Alu and uh, Alulu and Echidna. Uh, it also then, those people came back with different names. Was They keep repeating history and they come back with different names like Ra, people may be familiar with that Mm. name and Horus and Inanna and uh, Osiris you know it's the same people now what happened 16,000 years ago this planet was in a a total mess the humans that were here at the time were in complete fear of uh, total destruction and annihilation and a group came in and offered a peace treaty to work uh, for the benefits of humans, but they were not really. And the tribal people, which is it was all tribal people at the time, signed that deal. Now, initially, we got certain um, technology, as it would be described then, which is uh, agriculture and language and all this stuff. Um, but then uh, it became fairly obvious that they uh, had abused and the naivety of the people there at the time and, and they took over the whole lot now eventually certain one groups at certain times came in to try and save the planet and rescue from these people or these entities anyway and um, they went underground and there's a lot of races underground and one day people will find that out as being true at the moment people just take my word for it but um, eventually we will find out that there's a number of races that were um, some that were here long before us are operating uh, underground Uh, but these ones were operating above ground and the last time they came back they caused mayhem again which was the Egyptian time that that was about 5,000 years ago and since then, they've operated uh, in secrecy, mainly. And how have they, out. like, I mean, I'm 40, nearly 47 years old. I've never seen anyone like that, anyone like the description that you're given. And I mean, it's a similar description to, 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 to um, how Eric Van Doniken, um described these um, yeah. ancient gods. It, it, they also, I mean, even the name Enki and Enel, he even mentions them in his books, Chariots of the yeah. Gods, and one or two of his other books as well. And he purports that in prehistory that it was indeed as you say it was these so-called gods having these massive battles across the planet yeah it was nothing to do with with humanity itself and this is part of the ongoing um, discussions that i'm aware of where they blame uh, the humans in the past for destroying the planet and they will tell you uh, even the native tribal people would tell you we've, we've destroyed this planet five times well I don't think we've destroyed this planet once I think we've contributed to certain people in power when we've got when we've reached technological level um, certain people power goes to the heads and we're seeing elements of that now mm. but uh, it's the outside influence um, that Rani, and if you read the clay tablets, if you read uh, the emerald tablets, they all tell you about the flood, and it was all deliberately engineered. Mm. Well, how uh, you can only uh, do that by using advanced weaponry. We can't deliberately, well, we can by using a certain nuclear, but not the levels of flood that that caused. But you know, uh, two two thousand four hundred people died in what was it? 96 or 
2006 when that uh, Indonesia won. Mm. But but you know you uh, it didn't reach up to the uh, the levels of waves uh, that that was described in that where it was only if you're high up in the mountains would you survive you know. I mean, the, the, the biblical flood that, you know, we, we've all grown up at, like, Noah's, Noah's the, the flood of Noah. Um, yeah. Do you think that that could have been, you know, as part of this so-called battle that you speak of, that maybe the planet was yeah. tilted in some way and the water gushed yeah. across the whole planet? Yeah, yeah the, pl- the planet was hit with something uh, of uh, uh, tremendous force, which knock- knocked it off its axis. And so everything, uh, weather patterns changed. Uh, obviously, the uh, view, uh, it's like a, a, you throw anything into a full bath. It, it produces that push-up wave, mm. and, it, and it keeps going. Well, if you're throwing uh, something of enormous size, then it's going to then hit the core and knock it off, off the uh, pedestal, so to speak. And that's what, what took place. And... Um, you know, there's evidence uh, of other weaponry. Uh, as I say, we never had deserts. All of that was lush pasture, even uh, as far north as Siberia. Once yeah, because I've always go I, below the. I've always wondered, Thomas. Like, um, you know, if the sun is supposedly ninety three million miles away, I don't know if it is or not. You know, what I mean, it looks quite local to me. But I mean, if it's ninety three yeah. million miles away, well, then the whole planet would, you know. Um, get the same amount of heat you know sort of universally around except for the poles of course because they're not directly in the uh, the light of the sun but that that which is in the light of the sun would be getting a similar amount of heat and I've always wondered like but how did these deserts end up here right across the centre of the planet like what would have caused that you know is the heat that and, now don't get me wrong we know it's like you can get up to 40 degrees out in, out in places like yeah. Dubai and stuff like that but that to it's me possible, doesn't possible. explain why that is yeah. all desertified like why there's so much of it yeah. you know well, yeah, you know, it's clear um, he, the fact that it's been completely... Uh, that's why you got diamonds. Diamonds increased by impact. And, and you, you go through certain deserts in Africa and you can see all kinds of uh, glass. Well, that, that requires enormous heat. Well, clearly the sun hasn't done that, has it? And so it, it, that's... Um, it, you know, basic common sense. Mm. There's a load of uh, diamonds and a load of glass uh, sitting on the desert floor, it means it's been impacted by something uh, on, on a vast scale. You know, uh, I am aware that, that they do have uh, what they call the desert, desert, desertification. I'll, I'll put my teeth back in. <laughs> uh, it's like a, um, a rolling weapon, and it just rolls right across. Uh, the landmass, uh, and when you look at it, uh, the desert's the way it's gone, and then it's almost like a, a defined line. You then see that 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 is a possibility. You know, um, and most is there people any... are not, not aware of that tech, but if you look at it from Google. Is there any evidence too... that, that that is the case that you know those weapons ever existed in prehistory, or like if there was ever any evidence, it has it been covered up? You know, with the likes of the Smithsonian Institute or. Uh, they've they've got a lot of ancient history. You know what's gone on over the, particularly the last thousand years. Anyway, is the the, the and once the British Dutch Empire kicked in, and uh, most people think it's just the British, but it was the Dutch as well, and also the Vatican, as they paid for a lot of the uh, missions, including Columbus, um, was uh, wiping out history. You know, uh, they they all the indigenous tribes right around the world, whether it's the Pygmies, the Africans, the Native Americans, and the, the Amazonian people, they were trying to wipe them out. Why? Because they have the oral history, and then they can dictate how uh, history plans out, and then they write the books, and mm. people believe the books because that's the way we, we were brought up. But once you start analysing it, uh, none of those uh, history makes sense. Like the pyramids, you know, or more than particularly like mm. the Sphinx. You know, they tell you the Sphinx uh, was built 5,000 years ago. And yet it's got water erosion. 
and yet Egypt has not had um, rain to create that for 11,000 years. So, so there has to be. Either something else has caused it, which is uh, outside of our scientific knowledge, or the lion at the age of the Sphinx, which is, I, me personally, uh, I know it was at least 25,000 years ago that the Sphinx was built. And the other Sphinx, which is in Romania, which is hardly ever spoken about, is another important site. Well, I wasn't aware that there was one in Romania, but listen, I need to go to an yeah. ad break, Thomas, and we'll talk yes. about that Sphinx as soon as I come back. So do you mind hanging on for a couple of minutes? That's okay, yeah. Perfect. Folks, we'll be back in two minutes with Thomas Williams. Broadcasting to Lucan, this is Liffy Sound, 96.4 FM. John B. Keane's popular play Big Maggie will be staged in the Lucan Spa Hotel from Tuesday the 22nd of May through to Friday 25th of May at 8.30pm. Tickets are available at the door or can be booked in advance at the Lucan Spa if availing of the dinner and theatre offer. This is great value at €25. The play is directed by long-established director Niall Cassidy, who heads an impressive cast of familiar faces and new faces. Come along for a wonderful night of entertainment and support Luke and Drama. Hiya Sandra, how's the new kitchen extension coming along? I'm dying to see it. Hi Marie, the building work is finished, the kitchen is in and the tilers are working away, hopefully all done this week. I'd love to get my kitchen done, it's well overdue. No mon, no fun. Are you a member of Luke and Credit Union? That's where we got the loan. We had a decision very quickly and the loan was transferred straight into our bank account. I have an account, but I never think of the credit union for a loan. I wouldn't have survived without it over the years. We've had loans for cars, holidays and when I had my bathrooms done a few years ago. Oh, I'll drop into them today. Is it still near the Ulster Bank? It is, and they have another office near the Lord Lucan pub. Very handy. Lucan District Credit Union. Here when you need us. In our new four-part series, On the Cusp, our series dedicated to marginalised voices, we delve into the issues and experiences of travellers, immigrants, LGBT and former offenders living in Ireland today. Thousands of adults just disregard their vote every year and don't use it. Look, heroin and drugs in general has no um, class distinction, I suppose. It'll just shred anybody, no matter who you are. Like The fact that I have chosen to live in Ireland, then I may need to adapt to everything around my new home. To be intolerant, to be racist, to be judgmental is a personal choice. Racism cannot exist without the individual. Intolerance cannot exist without the individual. On the Cut, the initiative of CREA, the Community Radio Forum of Ireland and the Community Foundation for Ireland. On 96.4 FM. The very word. Now, folks, you're very welcome back. Um, my team tune just about to start there again. Sorry about that. And um, the text line is 087 062 7138. That's 087 062 7138. Now, um, Thomas, just before the break there, you mentioned a Sphinx in. Romania. Romania. No, no I wasn't aware of that. Can I explain that? Yeah, it's. it's um it's called the Busegi Mountains, B-U-C-E-G-I. And um, you can see, uh, the, if you type that in, you will see the Sphinx. It's not as clear. Uh, it's far more eroded than the Egyptian one um, because it, obviously it has uh, more severe weather. And uh, behind that um, is the, what's basically uh, in Inside the Basegi Mountains is the Hall of Records. And now there's, there was a Hall of Records in between the paws of the Sphinx in Egypt. Um, I'm not too sure it's there now, but um, the one in Basegi. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I have it up on the screen there now. I can see it. It does look very much like a Sphinx, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it is very the, similar. Uh, the second Sphinx. Yeah. Now, at the bottom of the um, Basegi Mountains, there is a smaller mountain called Mount Sinai. I think people will be familiar with that name in mm. the Bible. Um, perhaps that was the real place of the Mount Sinai and not um, in uh, across in e- uh, Israel. Uh, that's uh, open to debate. But inside the Basegi Mountains, there is um, a giant dome as you go in through the tunnel and um, holographic screens 
in a circular. Uh, there's chairs that on both sides that go circular around the, the circumference of the uh, opening and uh, holographic screens of all our history uh, are, is in there but only certain individuals as I understand are allowed you have to have a certain frequency uh, the US military threatened the Romanian government uh, that they would take over it and uh, the troops went in and they all died because they didn't have the right frequency and uh, so that's uh, they're protected uh, in that way so that the, eventually when we remove uh, this cabal and a new world order and the factions and we return uh, to a brighter future uh, with transparency and less wars and no poverty uh, the golden age if you want to call it that um, then the, the people who have the correct frequency will go forward with that history do you think that's going to happen though you know the, I, I, I follow one there's one particular guy I follow on YouTube I don't know if you know of him but Benjamin Fulford now I'm not saying there's anything in what Benjamin says but he he maintains that this this war going on at the very top of the um, echelons of power between the east and the west that, that the what he describes as the Kazarian Mafia Zionists etc etc those who are running the west he says they're on yeah. the way out that they literally are on the way out now and that's what all this stuff going on in the Middle East is all about they're desperate to start World War 3 in order to give them an excuse then to you know stay in power much longer yeah, uh, some of Ben's stuff uh, is uh, is okay um, as chunks of it that's uh, a bit distracting. Um, so, ben, what's, your, what, what's your opinion on him? What do you think he, uh, uh, of the stuff he's putting Ben's, in? I used to read Ben's blog back in 2005, 2006, and, and it was right on the money. And then around 2011, 2012, he got involved with David Wilcock and it went sideways. Hmm. That's my opinion. Um, but he does have um, uh, insiders, uh, but I'm, I suspect he's working, given the way his narrative is uh, laid out. Uh, I look at it occasionally and reverse some items, and then I get more sense of what's going on. But then I. So do you think I he could be other... a gatekeeper? Uh, Benjamin, uh, you know, the original Benjamin was Benjamin went missing for a few months, and I'm not sure that the latest Benjamin is the same one. That's my opinion. Right. Uh, it, it, the blog is is fairly similar. Uh, some of the things that are put out uh, does fit. Uh, but it's a computer voice bit. that puts his blog out now. I mean, you can go on and read the written blog on BenjaminFulford.net, but if you want to watch any yeah. YouTube videos, it's not actually him in person, it's a computer doing the voice, or you reading the yeah, blog. Yeah, it's, yeah it, uh, it, it, could be, uh, it could be anyone. That's the danger with yeah. the technology. But, you know, Ben uh, was helpful to uh, me when I was doing research. Um, 2000, you know, um, I was about 10, 15 years into it by then when I found Benjamin's blog. But if you listened or watched uh, or read uh, at the time through 2006 and 2011, um, it was a lot more detailed of what was really going on. Um, now it's um, geared towards a particular faction, and, and to be quite honest. So, uh, what I'm do you think, Thomas? In factions. What do you think, now, in your own opinion, what do you think is going on behind the scenes? Um, there is a takedown. Um, so you think there is a takedown see, of the cabal? Uh, there is a takedown, um, and it's twofold. Um, I, I did a show uh, called The Factions on Truth, Honour and Integrity in November of, um, well, it was actually on Cosmic Voice before I did my own show, but it's on my website, so... Uh, that explains all the factions of the Illuminati and who they are and what they, where they come from. Now, people have to remember the Rothschilds have got a finger in all the five yeah. factions, so they don't care which faction wins. They win anyway. Um, and there's a big takedown of the Rothschilds. Now, what's happened over the last four to five years is the Illuminati was the fourth layer of the control structure down. There was three above them. Now, the the one above them was what we know as the Covens. They're the ones that play dark magic. They're the ones that play games with people and um, do all kinds of uh, magic that people think is un uh, not believable. Mm. But they can have a massive influence on people. And uh, because we're not knowledgeable on it, 
they get away with it. Well, um, the, their system collapsed. The parent group that were above the covens, there was 21 of them, and it's down to two, and they're both com uh, completely insane and can't handle new frequencies, and possibly they may be gone now as well. And then the top group, which was uh, operated largely from outside of here, but there was elements of them inside of here, uh, was the Draco. And uh, that's what people will know as the Anunnaki, mm. although there's five branches of the Anunnaki, they're, they're just one of them. Um, not all the Anunnaki are bad, and some of them are not interfering anymore. In fact, most of the races are not interfering anymore. They've decided... Uh, we all have a common enemy and um, <laughs> have turned against them. So that, that, that's kind of uh, uh, where we're at. Well, the, the more familiar names uh, uh, that people are, the Bushes and the Kazarians and the Clintons and, and Tony Blairs and all, all these type of people, they're, they're the fourth layer down and they're puppets at the end of the day. Yeah. They, they have three layers who uh, are being told what to do. Well, once the top st structure collapsed, what you were left with was a combined Illuminati group who then broke up into the factions, which in essence, from our point of view, that helps us because then they started fighting each other. And this is what you're seeing in the media, uh, where certain media, uh, depending on which faction runs it, yeah. is, expo is exposing other names. See, I've been watching uh, the news over the last few weeks, as I'm sure you have yourself over in the States, Thomas, yeah. and like like six weeks ago, for example, it was North Korea, uh, they, they want to nuke everybody, let's go in and knock the crap out of North Korea. Then all of Never a sudden, happened. it's... Um, Hello, everybody. North Korea and South Korea have decided to get on with each other. Now you've got Israel yeah. over there now giving out about Iran. The Iran nuclear deal has had been cancelled by Donald Trump. Now you've got all this crap going on over there today. Um, you know, I'm just trying to figure out where, is, where do you think this might be leading? So I put out uh, on the show two years ago that North and South Korea would re reunificate. And uh, lo and behold, here we are two years later. This is what's happening. Yeah. All, all the furore over the nuclear is a cover story, both in North Korea and also Iran. It's all a cover story. How much do you think it's a covering? Lot, lot, there's a, well, the Rothschilds wanted the North Koreans to build nuclear weapons because they've lost control in other regions. Right. And so the North Koreans uh, were stopped and that certain conditions apply and now North and South Korea are talking to each other and, and they're gonna drop the border. You remember South Korea is a combined ran country, yeah. all of it. You know, the US military is in there mm. at the, uh, when I say the US military, I mean the USA Inc military. It's yeah. not America's military, it never Corporations, has corporations. Yeah, it's corporations and uh, the Rothschilds and... think they own the, the United States military and the Jesuits produced a document saying that they owed, uh, owned the United States military since the 1500s. So uh, what we did is we fired back at the Jesuits and, and sent them a bill for the last 500 years since the American people have been paying for something that doesn't belong. So they've shut up over that now. And... Uh, the uh, North Korea um, was a, a more to do with faction fighting because they'd lost control of the finance uh, of Japan. Japan was the eastern um, slush fund, trafficking money and all that was going through Japan. They lost uh, chunks of that and then they started losing in South Korea. Now, Iran is to do with covering up um, weapons were fired and I can't confirm this as yet, but I've been told that there was no warheads on those weapons that, that America fired at, at Syria. Now, so nothing was damaged. The, there was, a, I mean, a bit of structural damage, damage but no one was killed. It, you know, I know you heard no, the rumour no, as well I, that they had yeah, informed what, the Russians that they were going to be shooting into Syria, so, you know, get your people out of the way. But it's all just, it was yeah, all just a show. Yeah, it's all, it's all theatre. Uh, otherwise, why didn't Syria react? Why didn't Assad react? Why didn't Russia react? Because they, Russia are protecting them, but the, Russia are not protecting Syria. They're fighting ISIS, ISIL, 
and all those other names that are all connected to the agencies of MI5, MI, particularly MI6, and also the CIA. They're all bought and paid for. They're not Muslim terrorists. They're mercenaries paid mm. for by the agencies, so, top and bottom of it. No. And so Iran uh, goes back to the <sighs> deal, which was not anything to do with a nuclear deal and everything to do with funding those same groups because the funds uh, were being cut off and they were running short of ammunition and all kinds of other programs that were running through Syria, be it child trafficking, because they, they were emptying Syria out and they wanted to separate the children from the parents uh, before they went on the boats. Um, and then Obama uh, sent $1.6 billion over in cash. I mean, which government ever trades in cash? They don't. And so that that was a sting. And everyone says, oh, it's a nuclear deal. No, it's nothing to do with nuclear. It, and everything to do with funding the Hamas, the Hezbollah, you name it. So why would America want to fund them? Because the top end of America is run by the factions. Right. There used to be three factions. America is the center of it because America has more factions in it, you know, um, and they all want America to be collapsed because once America goes down, so does the rest of the world because the rest of the world has no guns apart from the ones supplied by the agencies yeah. to cause mayhem in regions that they want to take control of. Now, you see, I mean, today now you've got America back in Israel to the hilt as far as this embassy in Jerusalem is concerned. You even had Donald Trump's wife over there, Melania, and his son-in-law, um, Jared Kushner, and his daughter, Ivanka, um, being at the official opening ceremony with Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, surely this can't be good for America. I mean, half the world, most of the world is against this move. Yeah, absolutely. And I was when I first heard I've heard something that's slightly different. It's a strategic move. Um, and I don't think we're going to see whether that is correct or not until the months unfold this year. We're going to see a lot more between now and the end of the year. Mm. And uh, it could well be certain things have already been accomplished. Everyone's looking for this and a mass arrest. And it could be well be that certain ones have already been arrested and are being used to route out others. Route out others. I mean, what I, can't, what I couldn't get my head around today was, and this whole um, the embassy in Jerusalem thing, when Israel was bombed into existence, I mean, in, in 1948, why didn't they make Jerusalem the capital then? Why wait till now? Because certain families think they own that region. And which families would That's these be? Like, would you have any ideas of who these people are? Or? Uh, it's the mainly the Rothschilds. Right. So if the Rothschilds take over that region, then uh, it becomes a major uh, issue. So by um, installing an embassy there, it blocks them on certain levels. I get you, yeah, I see what you mean. But listen, Thomas, I need to go to one more break, so um, I'll be yeah, back in two okay. minutes. Folks, we'll be back in two minutes with, uh, with Thomas. Talk to you very shortly. You're listening to Liffy Sound, www.liffysoundfm.ie. Listen online, community radio at its best. Join us every weekday for Luke and Live from 3 until 4. Join Nathan Walsh and Amandine Devine, Maria Murphy, Brandon Hackett and Stephen Brown. For Luke and Live, Lucan's premium talk show. Every Monday to Friday on Liffy Sound 96.4 FM. Liffy Sound 96.4 FM presents A Piper in the Streets Today, a radio documentary by Brian Hughes which explores the unique history of the Illan Pipes in Ireland. The launch takes place at 1 pm, 26th of May, in the Peabury Illan, and the documentary will be broadcast on May 31st at 6 pm. Have you taken our advice and explored the many attractions in our lovely Liffey Valley? There's so much to enjoy in the Liffey Valley. Lovely parks, riverside walks, historic houses, water sports, children's play areas and much, much more. 
The Liffey Valley Park Alliance continues its work for the preservation of this marvellous amenity and its picturesque landscapes. You can play your part by using its various facilities. If you have not already done so, start now. You won't regret it. If you put a family into a hotel, how much does that cost to stay in a week? Seven, twelve hundred euros. Where's the state money? Where, where is they can put the, the proper resources and deliver what they're supposed to do? The hostels can be very violent and dangerous places. There's more drugs in some of the hostels than there are out in the streets. Why don't we hear about these problems? Because we don't hear the voices of the marginalised groups in our society. In our new four-part series, On the Cusp, our series dedicated to marginalised voices, we delve into the issues and experiences of travellers, immigrants, LGBT and former offenders living in Ireland today. They throw eggs and sometimes stones on our cars. They call us insulting names and some bad words. Because when you're going to your clinics and all, or in and out your cameras, you have people outside selling drugs here, off in your tablets, you know. You can't go on and look for people like that outside your clinics and all, you know. On the cusp, the initiative of Creel, the Community Radio Forum of Ireland, and the Community Foundation for Ireland. Local programs, local presenters, local news. Tune to Lucky Sound 96.4 FM. Now, folks, you're very welcome back. Um, Thomas, uh, just before we go, uh, we've got about 15 minutes left, and I don't want to uh, keep picking your brains about politics and stuff like that, because I know you were in work today, and it's quite hot over in Florida. So the last thing you no, probably I'm want No, I'm fine. To you carry on. But, um, um, and what, I, what I can do, uh, unless you had something else, I can talk a bit about the financial aspect. Yeah, of please do. Yeah, do. I was going to hopefully talk a little bit about yourself and what got you into all of this, but, I mean, it's probably a similar story to me on anyway. It's like I said yeah. in your bio, you had this feeling as a kid that something wasn't right, and we still have these yeah, feelings. Yeah, uh, hated authority. Yeah, um, same here. <laughs> parents, teachers, cops, you, you name it. Uh, to me, you know, society just didn't, I didn't fit in. Yeah. I never fitted in, and then you think there's something wrong with you. Uh, and then the internet come along and you met people all over the world yeah. and with all the, with the same uh, and, it, and it was comforting to many of us but it was to me as well yeah I mean when I got into all of this 15 years ago like most of my family like thought I was off my bloody head but they don't think yeah. like that now you know they, they actually do listen to what I have to say nowadays you know because well, they can see the world that I was describing to them 15 years ago yeah yeah it's you know it's uh, it, it's it's been hard psychologically for all of us uh, and all your listeners uh, and all mine um, finding out that this whole world is a lie. Yeah. Our history is a lie, our science is a lie, our education is a lie, and the banking's a lie, and the government's a lie, and just it goes on and on yeah, and on. There's no end to it. So listen, talk about the financial system, Thomas, and the yeah. fraud that that is. Well, um, what happened is uh, it, going back uh, 2,000 years ago, there was a trust fund and it was made up largely of gold at the time and some silver and other metals and diamonds and it belonged to the people. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the race that um, took over here then ran it up till 2012. The contract ran out, and this is known as the Manor World Holding Trust, and it's got quadrillions and quadrillions of dollars in it, uh, and in value of uh, metals, cash, um, and uh, minerals, and um, the Rothschilds and the um, Chinese elders who um, are suspected um, to be not from here um, have ran uh, this particular trust um, for t at least 2,000 years anyway. They took over at the council of um, and wrote all kinds of contracts and uh, agreements and treaties in the council of Nicaea back in 300 with Constantine and altered um, things that they shouldn't have done. And we have a team of uh, historians that have gone, have 
gained access to all the old archives and gone through it and found a lot of discrepancies. And it got to 2007, and what what the cabal were doing uh, is taking over certain regions, let's just say Washington, D.C., and I think most people are familiar that that, that is not part of America. Yeah. It's a separate state, like the city of London. The Vatican. That square mile is a separate state. Well, when they, they've done a lot of building over the last 30, 40 years for facilities underground for all kinds of um, advanced technology, and that cost a lot of money uh, and it had to be done in private. And what they were doing is um, uh, pledging uh, whole regions and resources to the trust and then getting funds back out. Well, they didn't put it back. Uh, they thought they could carry on doing that. And a group of people who were part of that system decided that they wouldn't allow this to continue and the funds should go back to the people. And that started in 2007, and that's why we had the crash in 2008, and that's why we're still in recession now, because they can't access the trust anymore. And um, so... Uh, and who's in control of this trust? Ran out, who controls the trust? Well, there's a, a trustee. There's a trustee, and uh, she has been on my show, uh, known as Kim, and she's the she's the trustee for the World Trust accounts, and um, she's been threatened by the Rothschilds and all the factions, as they're desperate uh, to remove her because uh, what she wants to do is give all the money back to the countries where it was stolen from, and. Um, you know, there's gold in Indonesia that belongs to Russia. There's certain assets uh, that set up the Citigroup Bank that also belong to Russia. And there, you'll find there's a lot of uh, stuff that's and history that's been uh, not uh, portrayed Russia in a bad light. But um, they they were the original Lemurians, and we're going to find out a lot of history about Russia that uh, is going to surprise many. They were far more advanced than people realise. And um, so, over the last uh, ten years, and particularly over the last five years, I've been working with them for the last two and a half years. Um, they've been reclaiming offshore accounts ties back to what is owed to the World Trust. And so this is why the Rothschilds now are doing fire sales and the Rockefellers sold a load of art because they're literally running out of funds. They can't keep the cabal system going, which is why they're all fighting each other, because it's too overbloated. And because they can't access the World Trust anymore and just pluck money out of thin air, now they're stuck with what they with what was left, and uh, the Federal Reserve was blocked from printing any uh, currencies from 2009, um, and we were going to get uh, some sort of one world currency, not their one world currency, Aye. but uh, yep. people's one world currency. You know, and the fight goes goes on now. Uh, what's happened since is because the UN was part of the trust, um, we collapsed the UN uh, last month and sold uh, all the assets off and gave them all back to the countries involved, including all the membership fees, which uh, part of the original UN should never have uh, been charged. So the countries have, uh, were able to give the countries back money and... Um, in a certain way, but those they're still blocking certain countries and they're still stealing. Can I ask you um, what your opinion is? Um, t this is a, a twofold question. One, first part of the question is where does 9 11 fit into all of this? And then the second part of my question is I don't know if you've heard of this Nasara and this global financial reset thing, this new American Republic. Um, what's your opinion on both of those? Like, does 9 11 tie into all of this? You know, with the uh, uh, the World Trade Center being, you know, the center for finance in New York at the time. Um, some say well, it was just a big, a massive armed robbery, basically. Yeah, the nine, uh, the two twin towers uh, um, were designated to be scrapped anyway because of the asbestos, asbestos was yeah. leaking. And uh, Jared Kushner and his group were going to buy it 
and and pulled out at the last minute and a guy called Silverstein bought it yeah, and did good old Larry. some uh, rather l- lavish um, uh, insurance scam on it uh, and you know I think he only paid one billion and made something like six billion yeah he made and, a uh, killing on that and, year, the, insu- yeah. and the insurance so the, those two two towers were going to be pulled anyway um, and then there was other things that involved uh, Saudi Arabia and the one thing it didn't involve was Osama bin Laden because uh, that guy is Tim Osman and worked for the CIA yeah. they knew where he was in fact uh, Mr well, Osman didn't he, he created the Mujahid in for the back in the 70s to fight the Russians uh, no the CIA did well no they created it like, but I mean Osama bin yeah, Laden yeah. was like their figurehead yeah, At yeah, the time. Uh, because he he was uh, he was the agent for the CIA. So was uh, Saddam Hussein. He filled his purpose, and then they removed him because he wouldn't fight Iran. Uh, and this is uh, things that people are not aware of, and, and people are blaming Muslims and Muslims are this and Muslims are that. No, they're being used as pawns, like the Israeli people have used as pawns. They're the chosen ones, as mm. they're not. They're just being used until they fulfilled the purpose and these people if they carried on which i don't think they will be uh will just wipe out anyone they don't care they, they've got zero compassion uh, for anybody uh barring uh, total control but it's all failed all the big plans have all failed and will continue to fail so do you think the new world order is falling apart it, like as we know it, like what we know is the world, new world order. You know these secret yeah, cabals running everything from it, behind the scenes. Do you think the whole kitchen cabal is coming down? Yeah, it's collapsing in on them on the, on themselves. That the infighting is beyond uh, what people can comprehend. Um, the you know they're exposing each other, uh, depending on which faction they're involved in. You know, who'd have thought that um, a British paper would publish a picture about the Queen doing the Nazi salute? Why? Because that was a Zionist paper exposing the Nazi faction. You know, uh, it, you would never have seen it. When was this? I didn't see that picture. When was this? Uh, uh, it was about two years ago. Right. I, I remember seeing a picture now of um, yeah. Prince Harry, yeah, the, what's his name, the little ginger lad. He was at yeah. a party a few years ago when he was dressed yeah, in Nazi that uniforms. Was, that was a fancy dress, but there was pictures of the, the Queen as a young kid doing uh, practice on the Nazi signal. Right. The as a child. They're all Germans. Right. You're able to know that German Saxe Coburg Goethe mm-hmm. being their original name. I mean, they yeah. only changed the name to Windsor so they didn't sound too German back in the <laughs> early 1900s, yeah, you the know. First First World War, the changes to the house they were living in. So the the World War Three has failed. You know they've been trying to pull that off since 1990. If it's failed and will continue to fail, Nibiru uh, doesn't exist uh, in the form that they think it does, and that's not coming in to uh, wipe us out either. They've tried the Zika virus, they've tried the Ebola virus, and they tried the H1N1, and it's all failed. And, and uh, they, they've they tried to collapse the whole world economy. That's failed. Uh, I've lost count of how many times that's failed. And it will continue to fail. All their big plans will fail because it's their time is done. Really? It ended at the end of 2000. I mean, I look, at, I look at our country here, here in pop- Ireland, right? And I'm sure the same is going on in the UK and probably in America too. I mean, since the crash, right? We had the crash here. We bailed out the banks. One thing they didn't do then was write down all the mortgages. And what they've been doing with the help of the court system here, which is a British court system anyway, they've been evicting people yeah. from their homes in this country in the thousands. And they've created a waiting list now of homeless people of over 10,000 who are on the homeless yeah. list now. Like, it's getting ridiculous. And I don't yeah, see an end it, to it any day soon. Yeah, well, uh, I do. Um, it depends on what you deem as soon. What we, the, the gist Well, is, in my lifetime, uh, uh, put it that way. Yeah, n- no, I think that uh, it will be well before the end of that. The gist is uh, there's been a, a, a system in place of control that very few were aware of for 16 and a half thousand years. And within the last decade, we've brought it to its knees. And it is on its knees. The financial are struggling. The military are struggling because they've got no finances. They can't pull out the trust anymore. 
and you know, doing everything now to just that they're in defensive mode, not attack. Because all the programs have failed. They tried to launch a new financial system that failed. The only one who's got the codes to the trust more only wants to give it to the people and the countries. And that ends them. The minute that goes out, it ends their control altogether. And do you think it will end up then exposing what you say is an alien influence behind all of this, going back thousands of years? Uh, uh, eventually you will. Uh, in essence, we've already had it. Otherwise, you wouldn't know about it. But where's the evidence we've for already... this? Like, I mean, I haven't seen any evidence that we're being controlled by aliens. I'm not saying we're not. I mean, I don't uh, know. The universe is a strange place. Uh, that, that, there is evidence that they're here. Uh, but uh, the evidence that they are, ran the system is uh, kind of limited. It's fairly um, well in. That, that yeah, oh, the, the, you know, they've got technology way beyond our understanding. You know, everyone thinks technology is the future. It's not. Mm. It's the past. You yeah. know, they've got things that can completely cloak. They can have something standing in front of you, and you like the Sasquatch. It. They have the ability to cloak themselves. So you, a Sasquatch can be. You walk through the forest, and you can be standing in front of it, and you think you're looking at a tree. Yeah. It, well, in essence, that's like uh, physical. I mean, I, I'm not saying there's not a hidden hand. I, mean, I remember seeing a video. Now we've got about yeah. a minute left, a minute and a half. I seen a video yeah. many years ago of a guy called Phil Schneider. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of him. Now he was, I think yes. he was, I think he was yeah. shot dead. But he, in a video, he gave a speech in a at a conference where he clearly stated that he was involved in a battle underground, but what he called aliens. And that uh, he shot yeah. one or two of them. They shot back at him with whatever weapons they had. Yeah. But he says they were here. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, he shot dead. Why was he shot dead? You know, to shut uh, him up. Because he starts, he starts talking too much. Yeah. Uh, he had a battle with the, what's known as the Tall Greys. And they're uh, riddled through the southwest of America, and particularly in the revered mountain. Everyone says, oh, I love to go to Mount Shasta. Uh, well, don't run into them because they are there. Scary stuff. But listen, um, Thomas, I have unfortunately come up to the end of the show and I'd like to say yep, thank you very much quick. for coming on. <laughs> it's been a bit of a blast. Yep. Listen, I'll, I'll get you back on again in the future because we've, there's so much we could be talking about. There's so many different subjects that we could go yep. down. So I'll, I'll keep in touch and hopefully I'll get you back on again soon. Listen, thanks very much for coming on. No, thank you. No and problem. Thanks to your listeners for listening. Thanks very much. Uh, listen, do you want to get the name of your website before you go? Uh, you, you people can go on uh, Think Different dot the people's club dot org right and, and they can uh, find you on there it's got all the archives and the links there brilliant that's brilliant listen thanks very much thomas and i'll talk to you again soon thank you mick bye bye now bye. now ladies and gentlemen that was um thomas williams oh, all the, the way over the... in 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 florida um over in Kissimmee in Florida now he is originally from Liverpool but he's living over in Florida but um it's an interesting show now to say the least I have to say um some interesting subjects. I mean, I haven't spoken about aliens on my show before. I think it's probably something we'll probably get into again. Um, it is an interesting subject. Who knows, folks? Maybe there is a hidden hand living underground, controlling everything, and everything is going to end up hunky-dory one day. I don't know. Hopefully we will do, but uh, until then, there's nothing we can really do, you know? Just keep keeping the faith and just keep moving forward, I suppose. Anyway, folks, this has been The World You Don't Know, and remember, as I always say, the world is full of wonderful people. If you can't find one, be one. Talk to you all again soon. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret society, to secret oath, and to secret proceedings. Waking humanity, one soul at a time. This is The World You Don't Know Radio Show, with your host, Nick O'Connor.